Greetings, everyone. This is Rock and Roll Spot coming at you with another song of Building the Team. So, last week, last time, we went with the, uh, <laughs> we went with the Justice Lords team, and, uh, sadly, uh, had a harsh truth broken, broken to us about, uh, blades and hypersonic speed, so, yeah, Dragon Fang didn't work that, didn't really work. In fact, Dragon Fang only got equipped to Hawk Girl once. The other two games, it just kind of, she sat around holding it until she was KO'd. This week, we're going with something a little different for the season. Um, consider, well, considering the season. Honestly, this is probably something that would see more uh, at home during October rather than December, but 666 points. One figure on, on, on the team must have the monster keyword. And as you can see, we have two teams here. So, first off, we have ourselves an Avengers team. Yes, I know. Kicking things off, we've got Mockingbird from the uh, from the Age of Ultron storyline set. Mockingbird comes in at 52, at 52 points, has the shield team ability as well as the Avengers, Great Lakes Avengers, Martial Arts, Shield and Spy keywords. Just with improved movement, ignores elevated hindering terrain. Uh, she opens up the special speed power top of my class, which uh, allows her to use stealth. When she's adjacent to a friendly character with a higher point value, she can use sidestep and willpower as well. And it's a good thing everyone else on the team has a higher point value because, well, yeah, she can use she can if she as long as she's adjacent to one of them, she can use stealth and willpower. Uh, that thing gives way to regular stealth on attack. She opens up with. Uh, we not have her? Oh, Christ. I would figure. Yeah, on on attack, she opens up with Quake, which then gives way to Precision Strike. On uh, defense, she opens up with Super Senses, which gives way to Comet Reflexes. On damage, she opens up with Empower, which then gives way to Shape Change. Next up, we've got the Miles Morales Spider-Man. So Miles comes in at 65 points, has the Spider-Man ally and Ultimate team abilities, as well as the Avengers, Champions, Shield, Spider-Man family, Ultimate and Ultimate's keywords, and improved movement ignores elevated terrain. We also have a trait, uh, Dimensional Travel Watch, which we're not really we're not going to use because no one else on the team has uh, Spider-Man the Spider-Man family keyword. Uh, basically, allows them to start with the game with the Dimensional Travel Watch equipped at no cost. But, like I said, as it basically grants the Summon Help from the Spider-Verse uh, tra trait, and there's no one else with the Spider-Man family keyword on the team, it would be kind of pointless to use. So, yeah. Um, then looking at his dial, we open up with a special speed power, a slightly different genetically engineered spider, granting him plasticity, size up, and stealth. We had a couple uh, late, mid to late dial to charge, followed by another click of the special power. On attack, we open up with special power Shocking Web Blast, which grants Spider-Man precision strike. And when he's given a move action, moves five squares or less, after resolutions, he can use in incapacitate as range at no cost, and may use it to target all opposing adjacent characters within, within uh, or all opposing characters within range and line of fire. His, his range, by the way, is four, so not great, but he can basically target everyone within four, every opposing figure within four squares and that he has a line of fire to, so yeah. And with the ultimate team ability, he ignores uh, hindering train for uh, line of fire, so no stealth. On uh, defense, we got top half of the dial is super senses, super senses, followed by the bottom half being combat reflexes. On damage, we open up without wit at the beginning, and at the bottom of the dial, we hit close out with shape change. Next up we've got Falcon. Falcon comes in at 75 points, has the Avengers team ability as well as the Avengers, Defenders, Heroes for Hire, Shield, and Soldier keywords. He also has improved movement in those characters. And we have two traits. First off, my friend Red Wing, at the beginning of the game, generate a Red Wing bystander. Red Wing has... Um, Autonomous. And there's what Red Wing looks like. Hypersonic, um, precision strike, 
super senses, as well as a couple traits. Vampiric Bird. Once per game when Red Wing be KO'd, instead it isn't. Protected Pulse Wave. Always by our side. At the beginning of your turn, roll a D6. On a 4th through a 6, remove an action token from a friendly adjacent character named Falcon or Captain America. So basically, you want to keep Red Wing adjacent to, Fal to you want to keep Red Wing adjacent to Falcon and Cap. Um, now, Falcon's other trait, Captain America and the Falcon. Energy shield deflection. The friendly character named Captain America is on the map. Falcon has autonomous. Now, what autonomous? Now, for those unaware, autonomous means that um, actions, their actions, don't count towards your action total. Um, so yeah, that uh, that Red Wing, that Red Wing bystander, can move. You know, can be given can do sidestep, can do hypersonic, even if I've used up all my actions. Which, to be fair, I actually won't because, well, in a 666 point build, you have six actions. With leadership, that's seven. I've got six figures plus Red Wing, so yeah. Anyway, looking at uh, Falcon's dial, we open up with a, on the top half of the dial, uh, speed dial, we've got charge followed by the uh, sidestep on. Attack, we've got Quake for the top half and nothing on the bottom half. He's got Indomitable, so built-in willpower, which is always a plus. Uh, then we've got uh, Super Senses on defense, followed by Combat Reflexes. Then we've got uh, the spe on damage, we have a special sp special power, I've learned from the best. Close Combat Expert as close. Meaning he can use Close Combat Expert in conjunction with Charge. It's always nice to see... Uh, pe Special powers that, that turn either close or range combat expert into a close act, into a close or range action, especially when they um, coincide with uh, clicks of either charge or running shot. Then we have some end dial regular close combat expert. Moving on, we've got Hawkeye from Captain America and the Avengers. Clint here comes in at seventy-five points as well. Has the team player wildcard ability. Uh, he also has the Avengers, Shield, Thunderbolts, and Martial Artist keywords. Improved targeting. May make range attacks out of adjacency, including to, tar to make range attacks against adjacent opposing characters. Uh, we got two traits. Uh, first off is Assembled Avengers. Um, once per turn when Hawkeye hits, after resolutions, roll a d6. On a 5 or a 6, if you're if you have three or more friendly characters with the Avengers keyword, remove an action token from Hawkeye, or give an action token to a, to a hit target. If you have six or more, do both. Then we get Not Tricks, Tactical. Granting Hawkeye Precision Strike, when he, he may use Precision Strike and or Range Combat Expert, even while targeting more than one target. Okay, all right. Looking at his dial, we open up with a couple clicks of the special speed power Hawk Guy, which gives Hawkeye running shot, sidestep, and stealth, and we get a few clicks of just regular sidestep before going back to the special power for the last click. Defensively speaking, or attack-wise, we open up with incapacitate and, yes, a 12 attack. We then go, get some energy explosion and back to incapacitate at the end. Defensively speaking, we open up with uh, willpower, which then gives way to initial deflection and back to willpower. On damage, we open up with a couple clicks of leadership and four clicks a whopping four clicks of range combat expert. And those range combat expert clicks are all on clicks where he's got sidestep. Now, yeah, one of those, he, he also has running shot. But, to be fair, at that point, you probably want to say, screw it, we're, go we're going with uh, range combat expert. Next up, we've got Captain America. Also from Captain America and the, Captain America and the Avengers. Cap here comes in at 85 points, has the Avengers team ability as well as the Avengers shield and soldier keywords. We've also got improved movement ignores elevated or hindering train and characters. He has the assembled Avengers trait, same as uh, Hawkeye, as well as the living legend trait. The first time each game that Cap would be KO'd, instead turn him to his last non KO click, then roll a d6 and heal him equal to half the result. Protected Pulse Wave. Now, normally, Pulse Wave deals its damage and ignores all other game effects. So if you if you single target pulse wave someone with uh, 
Invincible, it ignores the Invincible. Uh, whereas Invincible, for example, example does state that a character, the character with a character with Invincible can can take no more than three damage from from an attack. Well, Pulse Wave ignores that. So if you got say a five damage Pulse Wave, someone doing a single target Pulse Wave for five damage, yeah, it's going to eat right through. A stop click will still work if, if you hit a stop click after you know less than five, after less than five. Yeah, okay, that'll do the trick. But yeah, otherwise it has to be five damage straight through. But with when something is when something is protected pulse wave, then that means that it does not. That it still works, and that is one such thing. Uh, looking at Cap's dial. We open up a couple clicks of running shot, followed by a click of sidestep, then a couple clicks of charge, and back to sidestep at the end. We get some mid uh, precision strike on uh, attack. Fall, er, we get some er, actually no, we get some early dot precision strike, followed by some light mid to late dial quake. He's got indomitable. Opens up with a click of uh, impervious on defense, followed by a couple clicks of energy deflection, followed by a couple clicks of or a few clicks of combat reflexes. On damage, we open up the special power. Let's finish this, Avengers. Leadership. When Captain Wrecker rolls a six on for leadership or the Avengers, Avengers or, yeah, assembled Avengers trait, until your next turn, friendly characters can't have their combat values negatively modified. Okay. This thing gives way to a few clicks of regular close of just close combat expert. And now we've got our monster, an old favorite we haven't seen for quite some time. Hulk from the Avengers Age of Ultron movie set at his full 300 points. So, yeah, like I said, Hulk comes in at his full 300, has the Avengers brute and monster keywords. He also has three traits. Avengers Assemble, not to be, not to be confused with Assembled Avengers, it's very different traits. When Hulk hits one or more characters with an attack and action is resolved, the opposing player chooses deal one target one unavoidable damage and give it an action token, or put an anger token on this card. Next, fueled by anger, Hulk can use Colossal Stamina. When he has two action tokens, given a non-free action. You may remove any number of anger tokens from this card and roll a d6. That can't be re-rolled, increasing the result by one for each token removed. On a result of five or six, Hulk is dealt unavoidable damage from colossal from colossal stamina for this action. Finally, enormous green monster. Hulk can use Battle Fury each time Hulk takes damage from an opponent's attack, or one of his power combat abilities is countered. Put an anger token on this card. So yeah, um, it, when he whenever he's a target about wit. <laughs> Yeah, he just gets it. It just makes him matter. Looking at his dial, we open up with some charge. Oh, he also has the Avengers Initiative Team ability, which grants him improved movement and, and targeting, uh, ignores Henry Train. Targeting's not that big of a deal. The movement kind of is. Uh, but yeah, on speed, the only power he has there is charge. I don't think he has it for the entirety of the dial, but he does have it at various points. On attack, we open up with super strength. In fact, that he, he's only got super strength on uh, on on attack. Defensively speaking, he's got indomitable, so built-in willpower opens up with impervious, which then gives way to invulnerability, which then gives way to the special power. His anger sustains him. When this click is revealed due to taking damage, stop from the dial and remove all action tokens from Hulk. This power can't be ignored. Now, note this is ignored, not countered. You can ignore a stock click if you, if you really want to. It's kind of advised that you don't, but yeah. And then on damage, we have a special power that uh, coincides with his, uh, his anger sustains some power. He only leaves rubble. Hulk can use invincible and regeneration. When he uses regeneration, you may remove any number of anger tokens from this card. If you do, the D6 roll can't be re-rolled and you may increase the result by one for each token removed. Okay, all right. We've also got a few uh, objects to uh, make it a little easier. We're not at a, at a 
at the full 656. I think we're actually a couple points shy. But uh, first off, we've got the Venom Symbiote. The Venom Symbiote uh, costs four points. Gives the equipped character plasticity and shape change and the ability to automatically break away. It will likely be going on uh, Spider-Man, though Falcon's kind of a thought for that, too. In fact, Fal I'm kind of thinking Falcon might just play and get it. Next up, we've got another uh, standby. The Beetle Pod, which costs eight points. Grants the flight ability, toughness, and speed plus two, and will be ideally going on Hawkeye. Now, you've probably been looking at this big, at this big boy here and wondering just what uh, the deal is there. Well, this is our other 666-point uh, team. In fact, this team is an even 666 points. It's a, it is, now, it's a generic theme team, not a named theme team, so I get no um, theme probs. I also don't think I have any regular prob. Oh, I do. Uh, eventually on uh, Trigon's Dial. But it's a mystical theme. Um, so we'll start off with Trigon's Followers. We've got a couple of the Black Cat generic from uh, World's Finest. He's coming at 13 points. They are tiny. Have the animal and mystical keywords as well. We've also got improved movement. Ignores hindering training characters. We have a trait. When a black cat crosses your path, once per turn, when black cat moves through a square occupied by an opposing character, give that character a bad luck token. Okay. Well, looking at the dial itself, we've got stealth on speed, super senses on defense, and a... Uh, Special power on damage, bad luck follows. Black Cat can use probability control, but only to reroll the attack rolls of opposing characters anywhere on the map with a bad luck token. When Black Cat uses prob, after her action is resolved, remove all bad luck tokens from that opposing character's card. Okay. And sadly, speed values aren't entirely high on those. But with the with as they're tiny, they can be carried, so, you know, it balances out. Next up, we've got two occultists. The occultist comes in at 20 points, has the mystical keyword, as well as we got three powers. On speed, we have a special power, blood magic. When an adjacent friendly character takes damage from a... From a that from an opponent's attack, put a number of blood magic tokens on your front on the front of that friendly character's card equal to the damage taken. Even if this power is lost, that friendly character may be given a free action to remove one one blood token and use perplex targeting itself. Ooh. Okay. Um, the occultist then has willpower on defense and exploit weakness on damage. This is followed up then by the witch. Which has the mystical keyword, comes in at 20 points. Uh, we got some sidestep, followed by phasing teleport on for speed. Got, oh, two powers. Two powers on one, for one uh, section, okay. Um, energy shield deflection on defense, and on damage, we've got dark lightning, which can use enhancement, a unique modifier. When a friendly character with the mystical keyword makes a ranged combat attack, modify their attack by, by plus one. Now, the thing with that is, obviously, that you can only, even though all three will be adjacent to Trigon, he can only get the attack bonus from one of them. So, yeah. Fun. Next up, we have ourselves a Warlock. Like the Witch, Warlock comes in at 20 points has the mystical, and has the mystical keyword. Um... Then we've got uh, phasing teleport on speed, followed by sidestep. So again, to uh, reverse order, same two powers, just in reverse order. 
Uh, on defense, we've got combat reflexes. Then on damage, we've got a special power, battle magic. Warlock can use in power. Unique modifier, it's the same as the witch's uh, special power, or unique modifier only for close attacks instead of rage attacks. Finally, we've got Trigon himself. I don't like the fact that his. This, and it, I don't know, this may have been just a problem in the sculpting or what, but. I don't like the fact that he leans back so much. Makes him. Yeah. Anyway, Trigon comes in at 500 points, has the Mystics and Quintessence team abilities. Uh, Quintessence, it's the same as Power Cosmic, uh, Willpower, and Protected Outwit. Mystics, uh, whenever damage is dealt to him, the attacker takes one, one penetrating damage. We then get a trait, uh, where do you think your power comes from? Each time an opposing character with a mystical keyword or mystic's team ability targets Trigon with probability control, immediately modify his combat value by plus one until the, end, until the beginning of your next turn. <sighs> wow, that's uh, that's pretty hefty there. That's 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 pretty hefty. I, I, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, but uh, power. Looking at the dial, we on speed. We open with running shot, followed by mind control, followed by charge, followed by facing teleport. Um, on attack, open with a special power. Yes, yes, we do. We open with the special power, Reality Warp. Trigon can use Penetrating Psychic Blast, as if he had two targets. At the beginning of your turn, Trigon can use Barrier as a free action, but he may only place two blocking terrain markers, each within his range and line of fire, but they do not have to be adjacent to one another, to each other. When these terrain markers are removed at the beginning of your, of your turn, deal one damage to those characters adjacent to those markers' squares. Okay, all right. Uh, reality Warp then gives, he then clicks into the Pulse Wave. Uh, Defense-wise, we open up with Impervious, which then gives way to Invulnerability, then Super Senses, and Toughness. Then we have a special Defense Power, just when you think he's gone. If this click is revealed by taking damage from an opponent's attack, stop from the dial. Trigon can use Regeneration and Super Senses. Okay. On Damage, we open up with, I think we, do we open up with it? Or? Yeah, we open up with Shape Change, which then gives way to the special Damage Power, Demonic Disruption. Trigon can use Perplex and Probability Control, which then gives way to Exploit Weakness. Oof. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a hefty, and sa sadly, uh, this is, as Trigon is from an older set, he doesn't have the dial print on the back of his card, we can't look at where the powers all fall, where each power falls, so yeah. Yeah, he's, uh, he's something all right. <laughs> Anyway, that's all for now. As always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Links to my Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, and PayPal can be found in the description box down below. This is Rock and Roll Spock signing off saying live long and rock hard.